Hi, this is Jetal Nar, your marriage mentor, founder of Marriage Empowerment Tribe. Now, welcome to this episode of a series of three episodes na tatalakay on the why, what, and how to build a Christ-centered marriage. But before doing so, try to click the button below and that's the subscribe button kung hindi pa kayo nakapag-subscribe sa channel na to. Hit the bell para naman ma-notify ko kayo kung meron tayong bagong uploads. Now, alam niyo ba na mayroong surviving marriage at mayroon ding thriving marriage? Now, what's the difference between a surviving marriage and a thriving marriage? Yung surviving marriage is when it continues to live or exist in spite of. So, ganun naman talaga. We are living and existing in spite of all the tryouts. But what's the difference of a thriving marriage? Yung thriving marriage, yun yung marriage na nag-grow or lumalaki or flourishing or lumalago. Now, the opposite of a thriving marriage is a dying marriage, a failing marriage, and it's about to perish. So, nakakatakot naman if marriages will perish. Di po ba? So, kaya natin itatalakay ang why, what, and how to create a Christ-centered marriage because I believe as a marriage mentor that a good or a great marriage starts, begins with a solid foundation. Why do we have to create a Christ-centered marriage? Una, because it is God's design. In Genesis, sabi talaga doon na binigyan ng Diyos si Adam ng partner nang makikita niya na nalungkot si Adam. At sa Genesis, sinasabi din doon that the man leaves his family to be with his wife para makiisa sa kanyang partner. So it is God's design. So the second reason why we have to create a Christ-centered marriage is that it is instituted by Christ Himself. So, bago niya tayo iniwan, talagang nag-iwan siya ng isang sacrament on matrimony. The third reason why we have to create a Christ-centered marriage because it is a calling. Talagang tinatawag tayo, merong bukasyon. So, what's our calling? First, we are called to love. So, it's a commandment actually. In Matthew 22, verse 37 to 40, sabi doon, Love your God with all your mind, with all your heart, and with all your soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. So, sino ba naman ang pinakamalapit na neighbor natin? E siyempre, yung partner natin, si hubby or si wifey. We are also called to pray. So, eto yung pangalawang calling natin. The calling to pray. Now, it's in Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, na sinasabi doon, In every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, lift your request to God. In every situation. So, kung ang sitwasyon natin ay nasa marriage na, then we are called to pray. So, pray. Meron tayong formula na tinuturo niya noon. Pray is to praise God, to repent for our failures, for our errors and mistakes and sin. A is to ask, especially kung meron kang hinihingi ng special, and yield. So you have to submit to God's will. So yun yung formula na ginagamit namin mag-asawa pag nagpre-pray kami. Now the third calling is the calling to forgive. So meron naman doon sa prayer na repent. So, we are also asking forgiveness from God. So, why can't we forgive our partner? So, dito, we have to forbear pagpasensyahan. So, it's found in Colossians 3 verse 13. Forbearance and forgiving one another. So, forbearance and forgiving one another. Medyo minsan ma- mahirap gawin, lalo na pag nandyan yung galit, nandyan yung pride, um... Nandyan yung parang nasaktan tayo, di ba? yung pain. So, minsan talagang mahirap mag-forgive. But then, it is our calling in marriage to forgive. 
Another calling is the calling to trust. Trust the Lord your God with all your heart. So, kasi pag wala tayong trust, minsan we become so fearful, so anxious, so afraid na paano kung wala na tayong makain bukas, paano kung wala ng work si Habi, paano kung dadami yung anak namin. So parang we, we live in fear na talaga namang nandyan yung Panginoon promising us to give all His love and to give all His abundance para naman uh, tayo ay mabubuhay and not only surviving but having a thriving marriage. So trust in the Lord your God that's found in Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6. Now another calling na nakikita namin mag-asawa is the calling to purity. So ito yung medyo mahirap sa iba and uh, it's really biblical, scriptural siya. And in Hebrews verse 4 of chapter 13, sinasabi doon, and I'll, I'll just read para uh, medyo hindi tayo magkamali. Marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. So, kung alam nyo lang to na mayroong scripture talaga, mayroong verse na nag-provide the call to purity ng mag-asawa. Talaga namang kung uh, kinukumit natin yung marriage natin to God and to Christ, eh, hindi mangyayari na mayroong na-addict sa porn, mayroong third party na na-involved sa marriage, na minsan yun yung naging reason kung bakit naging failing, dying, at perishing yung marriage natin, di ba? So, this is the calling to purity. So, pure in heart, pure in mind, pure in thoughts, and in words. Lahat pure in actions. And another calling natin sa marriage is the calling to bless others. It's the calling to give, to be generous. Now, in 2 Corinthians verse um, 6 to 7 of chapter 9, it says there that uh, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. So, kung konti lang yung tinatanim mo, yung mga harvest mo, konti lang rin. But if uh, you sow generously, you will reap generously. So, sinasabi nga, God loves a cheerful giver. So, dito makikita yung pagiging generous natin uh, in our time, in our talent, and in our treasure. So, Dito ako nahihirapan minsan sa treasure kasi we, I myself sometimes would think na paano lang yung material uh, needs namin kung hindi maging kasya. But then this is a question of trust. No? So trust the Lord your God and when He provides and He really provides, then uh, talagang everything is enough and in fact more than what what is there, what you need. no So talagang na-test ko yan dahil nga, uh, I find it very hard yung the giving, the blessing lalo na on the material things and especially on the money part. No? Yung giving the tithe and uh, nahihirapan ako doon. So, it needs a lot of practice to be generous, to have a generous heart. And the last reason why we have to build and why we have to create a Christ-centered marriage is because we can receive grace. So, and in fact, this particular grace is not just basta-basta na grace. Kaya nga minsan, uh, meron tayong word sa Tagalog na disgracia. Kasi this means not, not grace. It, it meaning you, you do not have the grace. So, kung naging disgracia siya, so walang gracia. So, in marriage, if, if you just are faithful to the calling and kung alam mo yung rason, bakit kung nga ba gawing center ng uh, life namin, ng married life namin si Christ, dahil you will receive a sanctifying grace. The grace that will make you holy, both husband and wife, and in fact, even the children. So, an example for this is the family of St. Therese, wherein pati yung nanay niya, yung tatay niya, yung mga kapatid niya, halos silang lahat naging santo, naging holy. So which means in our 
being faithful to the calling of marriage, it is really possible for us to become holy. So again, this is a solid foundation for us to have a great marriage. So sana may napupulot kayo sa episode na to. And don't forget to download the worksheet na pwede ninyong gamitin mag para naman ma-evaluate ninyo or mapag-usapan nyo why do you really have to create a Christ-centered marriage. May you have an empowered marriage. God bless and see you sa next episode.